is been around for a very long time. And I must say that for the time that I've known him, uh, one thing that I really admire about Elder Roll is his familiarity of scripture. You just give the story and he will tell you that is found here or that is found there. But in addition to that, he's won many hats in this church. He served for numerous years, him and his wife, Sister Cherise, as the treasurer of this church. And so he's been allowing God to use him in so many ways. The church, be honest, the choir director, and his love is so much for music, I believe that all of us would see that even if we call us home sometimes, Cherise answers the phone, you can hear him in the background, you can hear the piano playing in the background. And so I even spoke with him one day this week and he told me that, well, keep, I'm preaching the Sabbath. And I said, well, that's no problem. You always have something up your sleeve. He was quick to rebut me. He said, no. He said, because I may have a message up my sleeve, but it isn't what I have up my sleeve. It's what God wants me to say. And he said that in addition to that, I would be praying for the message that God has for me to deliver to his people today. And so I know that he was praying. He's a humble servant. He's a man who loves the Lord. And I am quite sure that God has answered his prayer for the message that he has to deliver to his people today. And so just before he comes, we'll all say a prayer in our hearts that God's word would be proclaimed from the sacred desk today. But before he comes, to come and prepare our message, uh, our hearts with a message in song, our very own sister, sister, Cypriana Moss, she'll come. And afterwards, we'll hear from our elder, Elder Donnie Rowe. Good morning, New Providence, and happy Sabbath. I am a weak but thou art strong Jesus keep me from all wrong I'll be satisfied as long as I walk let me walk close to thee just a closer walk with thee. Blessed Jesus, it's my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. This world of toils and snares If I fall to Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden cheer? None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, this my plea, daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it 
When my feeble life is o'er And time for me will be no more Guide me to that distant shore To thy throne, dear Lord to thy shore so just a close walk with thee when did jesus it's our plea daily walking close to thee the Lord let it be Father in heaven, we are thankful for your presence here this day. And oh God, your people are expecting a word from you. Oh God, I pray that you would use this feeble vessel to deliver your word. And I pray, oh God, that we would leave this place edified we would leave this place oh god seeking that closer walk with you each day in jesus name amen i believe it is past noon And so I say good afternoon, everyone. It is certainly good to see each and every one of you this day. And I also say good afternoon to those who are listening by Zoom or any other type of media. It is good to be in God's house. And the thing about God is he is everywhere at the same time. I want to start by thanking Elder Keith for his more than kind words of introduction and pray that by God's grace, I would be able to live to God's expectations of me. And I'm also grateful for, to Sister Cipriano for that song, Just a Closer Walk With Thee. And really, that is the essence of my message here today. I want to say to those who are listening by Zoom or any other medium that be encouraged, this too will pass. We as a church though, got to be responsible and encourage folks to adhere as best as possible to the protocols that have been offered by our government and those in authority, recognizing that the word of God says to us in Romans chapter 13, that we ought to be subject to the higher powers. 
And of course, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 says, If we be willing and obedient, I know it's in a different context, but we can make application here. If we be willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. And of course, we know what happens when we do otherwise. And so we encourage everyone, according to what the Spirit says to you, that do. Right? But our goal is that we want to see all of you healthy and serving God for a long time. All right? My message today is entitled, The Great Reset, 2021. The Great Reset, 2021. COVID-19 and the world's reaction to it has created dire circumstances that we will not soon forget. In a noticeably short period of time, events that were unfolding on the other side of the globe became a reality as well. As of January 22, 21, official records from the CDC reveal that there were more than 98 million cases worldwide and more than 2 million deaths. The same source states that in the Bahamas, we had more than 8,000 cases and 175 deaths. COVID-19 has introduced new realities that we never imagined would have occurred in our lifetime. Never have we witnessed such levels of unemployment. Usually, when there are certain events that negatively impact certain industries, aspiring persons are generally able to pivot to where the opportunities exist. However, the restrictions of the emergency orders limited opportun opportunities to an incredibly significant extent. Prior to the pandemic, curfews, lockdowns, and the wearing of masks by all and sundry were familiar only in a vicarious way to avid movie fans. But now, it is our way of life. We became acquainted with new concepts like social distancing. The increased focus on hygiene, particularly the frequent washing of hands and the use of hand sanitizers. The events of COVID-19 Shouts to every man, woman, boy, and girl who has understanding that our world is fragile. We have learned that our lifestyles and our finances can be adversely affected very quickly, even with incredibly careful planning. It speaks to the rich, the poor, the in-between, that we are all vulnerable. 
many of us have had to adjust our spending patterns, habits, lifestyles, living arrangements, and the list goes on. On a local front, we observe that the various agencies of our government have been providing financial and social support to a vast number of persons for almost one year now. Amid the uncertainties of our new reality, our world is in a frantic search to find answers as to what happened, what is happening, and what will happen. Who is behind all the madness that is shaping our new existence? Who, who is orchestrating affairs that are stretching our world economies to their breaking point? Conspiracy theories from supposedly knowledgeable people abound and are being shared daily. And they do nothing to lift the spirit. The world does not have the answers. When the world is pressing in on us, our only source of hope is to turn to God and to his word. I am not here today to talk about what the World Economic Forum is doing, or even what the United Nations are doing. I am here today to talk about what God is doing. And his, and his great love towards us. Firstly, he is Emmanuel. God with us. He will never leave us, nor abandon us. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 says, Lo! I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Second Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter one, verse seven. God says, I have not given you the spirit of fear. of power and of love and a sound mind. God has promised that he will be with us. As we've learned from the book of Daniel, God is in control. And he still rules in the affairs of mankind. God sets up kings and he takes them now. You know, we have a habit. We like to focus on what the what we call powerful world leaders are doing. We like to keep up with people like Putin. Observe what Putin is doing. What Kim is doing. What Trump is doing. And now what Biden is doing. We do not need to be perturbed or be focused on the actions of world leaders. 
We just need to be focused on where God is leading. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1 says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He directs it like a water course, wherever he pleases. And so, no matter how wicked or how corrupt a ruler may be, God is able to use him to accomplish his purposes. Secondly, God's love towards us is everlasting. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And loving courts have I drawn you. God's love for us is eternal. It is unchanging. The same God that loved us prior to the pandemic still loves us. And by his grace, will and purpose for our lives, he will see us through the pandemic. The third thing for us to reflect upon the day is that God thinks positively about you. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, God says, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Though some of us may be jobless, though the bells may be mounting, we may be facing pressure from our creditors. Some may be dealing with family pressures. Sorrow because of loss of loved ones. Listen up. No matter the situation, God is with us. His love towards us is unchanging. And he has plans to prosper us. Let us see what God says through the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 and 2. And it goes like this. I'm reading by the New Living Translation. It says, but now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Neither will the flame set you ablaze. God has promised that he will be with us through the worst of situations. And you know, there are some people who say, listen, no matter what, I'm going to be here for you. But they can't do that much. They can't do that much. But when we're talking about God, and he says, I'm going to be there for you, we know we have someone with us. 
God says in Psalm 46, Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Friends, God has committed himself to us. And he will take us through the worst of circumstances. God has positive plans for us. Plans to give us hope and a future. Friends, no matter what may be going on in your, uh, in your life right now, remember, God is with you. God loves you. He has plans to prosper you. Remember, God is with you. God loves you. He has plans to prosper you. I know we are social distancing. And you can't get close to anyone right now. But just turn and look at someone. Don't go close. Just look at them and say, God is with you. God loves you. He has plans to prosper you. Amen. That's the word of the Lord today. Say COVID-19, surprise God. Yes, sir. God was not taken by surprise by COVID-19. In fact, God revealed in his word a long time ago that COVID-19 was coming. In Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, we have recorded where Jesus gave signs that were relevant to the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. This, that occurred in the year 8070. And he also gave signs that signal that the end is near. When we look at was when we look at verses uh okay let me find this place now four to six four to six of march chapter 24 four to six of march chapter 24 yes we'll read it together it says and jesus answered and said to them Take heed that no man deceive you. He says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Verse 7 says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. In verse 4 to 6, we are warned that we ought not to fall prey to false Christ and false religion. And the passage goes on that there will be signs among the nations. There will be wars and rumors of wars. And then it gave in verse 7 some physical signs. It says that there will be famines pestilences and earthquakes in various places. My question today is, what is COVID-19 for the pestilence? This sign is like the three angels message, this, 
of Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 12. It proclaims to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people that the end is near. And it is time to see God more earnestly and be more committed to obeying and honoring him that we've been doing at any time in the past. Verses 44 of Matthew chapter 24 admonishes us to be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when we, may, when we are not expecting him. Verse 36 of the same passage says, but of that day and of that hour knoweth no one. Hence, we are commanded to be ready. How do we live? While grappling with the changes and the uncertainties that some of us are facing right now. Turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. The very same passage that was read for our scripture. Matthew chapter 6. Beginning at verse 25. It says, Do not worry. Do not be anxious. It means do not make yourself sick, burdening yourselves with things that are beyond your control. You know, Philippians chapter 4 says something that's very similar. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, beginning from verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. You know, some may say, How can I rejoice? When I was laid off several months ago, how can I rejoice when the red man is threatening me every day? You know, we as a people are fortunate. And I heard someone say that we are blessed. And it is true. You know, we become accustomed to a certain lifestyle. As long as we are able to maintain that, God is good. No, but when things change. And that is what life is all about. Life is about. No. Life is all about. No. Uh, uh, when things change, we say, where's God? Where's God? You know, I came across a particular reading. It says, if you have food in your fridge, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and a place to sleep, you are richer than 75% of the world. You know, I saw an article that was in the Washington Post uh, 
2016. And basically, it says if you net assets, there's a little more than $3,000. You are among the world's richest persons. You are among the 10% of richest folks in the world. If you are net assets, the things that you own exceeds what you owe by a little more than $3,000. You are among that class of the 10% of the richest persons in the world. If you are, I'm going back to the reading, by the way, that is by the unknown author. It says, if you have money in the bank, your wallet, as a spare change, you are among the top 8% of the world's most wealthy. Right? If you woke up this morning with more health than illness, you are more blessed than the million people who will not survive this week. It goes on. If you have never experienced the danger of battle, the agony of imprisonment, or, ter or torture, or the horrible pangs of starvation, you are luckier than 500 million people alive who are suffering. If you are able to read this message, you are more fortunate than 3 billion people in the world who cannot read at all. So what we may be referring to as tough times. What be a picnic? So the passage in Philippians chapter 4 says, beginning from verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. It says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is now. Do not be anxious for anything. But in everything. By prayer. And supplication. With thanksgiving. Present your requests to God. Verse 7 says, and the peace of God. Which transcends all understanding. Regard your minds and hearts. In Christ Jesus. So a bit is all. Jesus wants us to have peace. God wants us to be joyful. Recognize that we are blessed. Jesus admonishes us to quit worrying. Be thankful. Be joyful. Keep using the royal telephone, which is toll free and never busy. In verses 26 to 29 of Mark 2, chapter 6, Jesus gives us two lessons from nature as to why we should not worry. Two reasons from nature as to why we should not worry. Do you know that one of the ways God communicates with us is through nature? Nature provides powerful evidence of God's love. But unfortunately, and to our shame, 
We are so busy that we do not see it or we do not experience it. Beginning the day, it's the upper. But beginning the day, go for a nature walk. Sit near the ocean. Observe the sky at night. Participate in early morning or evening exercise in the outdoors during the week. Enjoy nature. In verse 26, Jesus says, look at the birds. They do not go to work. They do not have any means of storing anything. Yet, God provides for them every day. He continues in verse 28. Says, consider the lilies of the field. Now, we may not be so familiar with lilies. But Sister Carrie, what's your favorite flower? Okay, you like them all. Okay. What's that? I heard something. Someone say, okay. What, what are some of your favorite flowers? I hear hibiscus. What else? I hear sunflower. I hear rose. I hear tulip. And I believe if you were asked to describe them or say why you like them, you can do a pretty fine job of that. Because, you know, God has made all things beautiful. And you notice I didn't really ask the men. Because even though we appreciate these things, you know, we may not take the time to find out what the, what the name is to our shame, right? <laughs> but God has made some pretty flowers. But this reading, I believe Jesus picked something that was familiar to everyone around. He says, consider the lilies. And you may want to consider something that's familiar to you. How they grow. Right? It says, listen, they toil not, neither do they spend. And it goes on, it says, even Solomon, and Solomon was possibly one of the richest kings of Israel. It says, even Solomon, in all his glory, in all his money could afford, wasn't as beautifully arrayed like this. Someone may be asking, is God saying that we should not be worrying or we should not bother to go to work? Is God saying that we should be idle? We find in Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, Genesis from the very beginning, after man sin. And by the way, he had worked before that too. But after he sang, Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, God says, In the sweat of your face, thou will eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken. For thus thou art, unto dust thou return again. And also, there's another passage that I would like to read for us, and that is Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28, it says, Let him that stole 
steal no more. But, but rather, let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. So Jesus tells us, don't worry. Look at the birds. Look at the lilies. But he also tells us that we ought to work. Labor is ordained by God. And I believe that the apparent dilemma between do not worry and working or being busy it's so when we look at verse 33 it says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you when we see god first he takes responsibility for the remainder of our outcomes. When we commit our ways to God, seek his direction, he directs our steps, he directs our path. When we see God, he's given us assurance in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13. He says, you will seek me. You will find me. When you search for me with all your heart. Seeking God and living to please him, friends, it positively affects every segment of our lives. Because we are seeking to please God, we will not rob others to enrich ourselves. Because we are seeking to please God, we will be faithful to our spouses. Because we are seeking to please God, we will honor his holy Sabbath day, which is the seventh day. While seeking to please God, we learn from his word that we are not our own. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we are to glorify God. In our bodies, First Corinthians six, fifteen to twenty. While seeking to please God, we learn that we are to be faithful in the stewardship of our time, our talents, our temple, and treasure. Now, I want to touch what some of us may feel is the sacred cow. Turn with me in your Bible to Malachi. Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. While seeking to please God, we will be faithful in the return of his time and offerings. Malachi chapter 3, beginning from verse 7. Malachi chapter 3, beginning from verse 7. It says, Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees, and have not kept them. God says, return to me, and I will return to you, 
says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how shall we return? Was it says, that a man rob God? Yet yeah, you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? The answer comes in time and offering. Verse 9 says, You are cursed with a curse. The whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Verse 10 says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. You hear what it says? Bring it into the storehouse. He did not only say, Return it, but he tell you where to take it. Says, bring the whole tithe into the stalls, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the flood gates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. And the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Then all nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Brothers and sisters, the great reset for 2021, of which I speak today, is not found in the pages of the economic books. It is not found in the horoscopes. It is not found in the philosophy books or the minds of the earth geniuses. Brothers and sisters, the great reset that I'm speaking about today is about prioritizing and seeking God through prayer and Bible study each day. It is about ordering our lives in accordance with his word. It is by God's grace. Seeking to be faithful to all that God has commanded including our stewardship of his blessings. Brothers and sisters, if this is your desire, I ask that we all stand as we pray together. Father in heaven, we are so thankful today for your word and the reminders that it gave to us, O oh Lord, that you are with us, that you love us, and you have positive plans for us. O oh God, Help us to trust you. And the instructions that you give us in your word. That we would be careful to do all that you have commanded us. That it may be well with us. Oh God, we recognize That you are coming soon. And we ought to be ready. Help us not to be so focused. On the cares of this life. On making a living. That we don't have time for you. But oh God. May we order our lives in accordance with your word. 
whereby we seek you first and allow you to direct our steps. Oh God, I pray that we, that you forgive our missteps and help us by your grace to be faithful unto you until the day that you come or call us home, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.